Marhaba, Sabubona, and Doberdan. Hi, I'm from Green Shorts, and I've been talking about this for a long time. It's time to start the camper build. And the big news is that TingTube has agreed to sponsor this entire series. TingTube is a system of pipes, connectors, and accessories to empower your DIY projects. You've seen me use TingTube on several projects, the greenhouse roof, the ladder rack short, as well as the roof structure for the tiny studio. And TingTube is gonna figure big into this camper build, which is why it made sense to bring them in as a sponsor for this series. All right, let's get started. Just a quick note, if you've been watching the tiny studio build series, it's getting into the minutia. And so I'm just filming it in smaller pieces and I'm gonna wrap that up in one final video. Thanks for watching. I'm at my friend Chad's house to pick up the trailer for the camper build. You know Chad, that's Chad from Mancrafting. Chad's got the largest version of the Rocket King we've made yet. It's a beast. He's also got a load of scrap metal in this trailer that we're going to take to the recycler. Good morning. Getting those uh, tires pumped up. Okay. So here's the trailer. It's actually a wheelchair trailer for a motorized wheelchair. And I'm going to have to come out over the top of these wheel wells with the uh, to get it wide enough. All right, so we're going to clean the the debris out of this, put the metal back in, and take it to the recycler. Chad's one last use of this trailer before he hands it over. It's been sitting here for a while, hadn't it? Um, I was using it to mulch. Chad's mobile garden. Of course, all this wood's gonna be coming out. All right, the garden is removed. Now let's put the metal back in. Metal it is. In the concept phase of this project, I developed an initial idea and then simplified. Then I fleshed out interior and accessory ideas. I sent those concept sketches to TinkTube with my pitch. They accepted and then suggested that I schedule a call with Esteban. Who's Esteban? All right, so let me introduce you to Esteban Solano. He's a design consultant with TinkTube. And one of the things that they offer is the ability to schedule a 15 minute phone call with Esteban. Not only can he help you with your project, but he's gonna help you with mine. Well, first of all, uh, happy to be here with you today, Tom. It's a, it's a pleasure. We've done this in the past and I'm always excited to talk to you again, um, collaborating with ideas. There are four elements of the camper build that I feel like are gonna really hinge on the Tink2 product. And so what I'd like to do is talk about my ideas for those four elements and really get some feedback and suggestions from you, things that maybe I haven't thought of or things I could do to make it better or, or do it correctly. The way I'd see it is basically form follows function. So if you ask yourself why as many times as you need to, eventually you're going to get down to the root of why it is you're making whatever it is that you want to do. So. So the why for me, it, the, the, the reason I'm making this camper is that I, my, my son is 16. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> He's getting into mountain biking. It's something that I also enjoy. And so this camper is gonna serve two purposes. It's gonna be our home base when we go mountain biking, but it's also going to be the protector for our bikes in transit, for the bikes to fit inside and then two sleeping positions inside the camper as well. So. The other element, and one of the things that really attracts me to TinkTube is a lot of teardrop campers are made out of plywood, and, and that's heavy. TinkTube is light. You know, that this camper is going to be towed behind my tiny hybrid. Weight is definitely a consideration. So this is going to be not a traditional teardrop, not an overlander, because I don't have a four-wheel drive vehicle to pull it with. But bringing both of those ideas together and creating something new, perhaps, as well. 
Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I think it's an in-between and, uh, and, it, and it just, again, it reemphasizes the DIY spirit. Um, I think that the product itself is, is, is uh, solid, strong enough to be able to do what you want to do. We have all the different types of connectors and accessories that can enhance it, keep it light by adding uh, different surfaces that are not as heavy as perhaps the plywood or the traditional plywood would be. You'll have a cool, more of a like rectilinear teardrop shape. It's going to look really cool and it's going to look very uh, well thought of and finished, right? At the end of the day, I think it's all about um, being proud of what we make. And I think that you'll be uh, more than happy with the uh, outcome of, of uh, what you're going to be doing. So the, the first thing, and obviously early on in the build, is going to be the skeleton of the camper. And that is going to be a tink tube frame. So going to be up the sides, over the top. Over that frame, I'm going to skin it with what's called a ACM, an aluminum composite material. So it's got a layer of aluminum, a layer of thin layer of plastic, and then another layer of aluminum. Um, and then inside that tank tube skeleton is going to be some Luon. So that really lightweight plywood, going to finish that naturally. So it has that really cool Danish uh, light interior. And then going to stack insulation in between, in between those two layers. So uh, probably an inch to an inch and a half. And where I have the difference there, I'm going to do a little bit of an inset. So um, the Luan will come in a little bit further. And then that gap right here is going to be uplit with LEDs. So kind of doing some soft interior lighting there. So I'm not going to try and do a lot of bins since this is my first camper build. Kind of want to ease into it a little bit. You, you have the right idea. Um, keep focused with that overall external uh, integrity. Consider at least the corners and the top to be able to do a through bolt so that you can have a nut and bolt really hold everything together so that we make sure that that exterior uh, skeleton is, is as solid as it can be. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I will definitely incorporate that. I did want to show you just, I had done a little model here of kind of the shape. So yeah, this would be toward the, the vehicle side. Um, and then you know, that sort of a little bit of a curve down toward the back. This is rough, of course. And then a little bit of a point on the front to kind of act as a fairing. But that's where I want to put my door. So this is where the door will be. And that'll, you know, rotate up this way, perhaps. Or I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work yet. But that's kind of the general uh, model. And one other thing we're considering on this, on this build was the ability to use three-quarter inch electrical conduit. I know you had yeah. some new spacers coming out that we were going to utilize as well. So I was thinking about using the um, conduit for the hidden portions of the skeleton. And then this, the one inch tink tube pipes, um, probably the black, because that would go nice against the aluminum, use that wherever I have exposed piping, because I, I really love that um, powder coating finish on that. We do have the adapter are available now in order to be able to incorporate the uh, three-quarter inch conduit with the tink tube. So it's a nice little feature. What's also really cool about the three-quarter inch uh, EMT conduit is that you can also slide it into the one inch uh, tink tube. So essentially you can do all these kind of cool little pull-out type of uh, uh, features where you can slide EMT out of, a, out of a, the uh, one inch uh, tink Ooh. tube. I'm sure that opens up a whole bunch of other yeah. ideas. Right on. Tom, what's the overall size of that, of the, uh, of the actual camper, if you will? You know, that's the measurement I need to do yet. Got to get it hooked up to the car. I'm going to take a photo of myself sitting in it. I want to be able to sit up inside. Actually, more importantly, my son needs to be able to sit up inside. He's already okay. taller than me. All right. <laughs> so we're going to get his measurements as well. I will need to make some modifications to the trailer. I do need to lengthen it a little bit. I'm also going to take off the drop gate. And that'll be the first video after this one is getting that taken apart and, and re-put back together. The, the second thing I mentioned, um, you know, was the two sleeping spaces. So I want to have two cots inside. I'll have some bedding or canvas um, bases made for those. But I want them to, to fold up. Uh, because I want the bikes to be able to go inside when we're traveling. So I'm also thinking those will have kind of a, a mummy shape to them. So more narrow at the feet, a wider at the shoulders, because the feet will be pointed toward the entrance end of the trailer. And I want, you know, a little bit more space there for in, ingress and egress. So, you know, I know you've got some hinged brackets, uh, 
but the corner brackets, I think need to be ones that I can have angle on, or maybe a combination of brackets to get that tapered angle versus say the 90 degree corner. What are your thoughts on that? So that's really cool. I would think that, yeah, we can have maybe an adjustable angle on that corner, possibly doing something with the HJ6, or it could be the HJ6A, which are the ones that are going to be able to give you that option to be able to adjust those angles. So that would be my idea there. And then again, if you wanted to have them uh, go up or drop down, whichever the case you know, there's always the option for the HJ23, which is kind of like a, a door hinge, if you will. So that's a hinge mechanism there, or maybe even something with the HJ12. I really like the idea of at the bottom of that cot, having that slide, you were talking about the three quarter inch conduit sliding inside the mm. tank tube pipe. That'd be a really great yeah. way to do some space saving, you know, when we're not in the cots to have the ability to sit in the trailer so that maybe maybe the whole cot compresses down into half. I'll have to ex maybe experiment with that. So that's the nice thing is I have all the parts I need. I can see how to configure it bef before I have to make any cuts. Since I've been playing around with that uh, EMT as well, I've been using this AC strap. I'm using it to latch the uh, one inch. And then when the three quarter inch uh, EMT slides out, I kind of catch it in between the two and I latch them together with this particular AC strap here. So it kind of holds it and bites it down. And it's a really quick way to, to loosen it, slide it, and then fix it back into place. But that brings me to the next element, um, which is going to be the outdoor kitchen. And the way I want to accomplish that is, is two rails, on the outside of the camper. It'll be the full length of one side. I wanna have four components that mount on that rail that serve four different purposes. So the first will be um, to hold a water jug, five gallon water jugs with a, with a spigot in it. And next to that, I'm gonna have a sink. Next to that will be a prep area. And then finally, you'll have a spot for a stove. So one insert will be for a regular camping stove. And then another one will be for a purpose-built rocket stove that I'm going to add to this camper build as well. So you can see that top view of the, the water sink prep and stove, those four components along that rail. The clamp bracket you just mentioned would be key for that because those will need yeah. to come on and off um, for traveling. I would recommend that one, the AC strap for sure, in order to be able to have that travel worthy. The reason to have them be four separate components is that maybe sometime I just need the stove. I'm doing a more quick in and out setup and, and I can just bring out that one component and clamp it on and be done and not have to set up all four elements. AC strap seems like a pretty good accessory to for uh, all the types of uh, features you want to do. So will those come on and off? Like, does that allow a full taking it off of the pipe? Versus yeah, exactly. You had an example of a, a, a really cool camper kitchen. And there's a couple different ideas here, but they all kind of resemble what you mentioned. But basically, uh, a little kitchen for, for a camper, you know, nothing too big. There's a drop down here or, a, or um, a swing up so that we can go ahead and have space for cutting. Uh, whenever we needed to use the stove, we can lift this up and then we can drop it back down and have a little bit more of a surface. Over here, I had a sink. Um, I thought about using um, the, um, the accessory we have here, the AP pole, which is basically going to be able to, uh, in this idea, I thought, why not add some straps with bungee straps just to kind of um, almost like enhance the look and give it a real cool modern feel to, mm. to the structure. So I thought maybe even uh, for, for yourself, I wanted to mention what about maybe using straps in order to keep things in place. And so this little kitchen here, little panels with the uh, different accessories here so that we can take them on and off easily. And then here's another section here where I mentioned having that drop down um, table again we're using this one particular accessory here which is very easy to lift off drop down and then it folds into place uh, we mentioned the hj23s which again i use them for the uh, opening of the door this is that top portion where i mentioned so that it's going to sit back down when the stove is not in use so there's a lot of different ideas yeah there's definitely some parallels like if you look at the back to the main drawing here 
that angled section there out to the side is exactly that kind of profile I'm talking about. But, you know, four pieces like that along the side of that rail, then maybe some of those straps like you're talking about between the rails. So those rails could be, you know, maybe some some auxiliary storage as well. The best thing would be just to basically we'll, we'll send you a, a box of all of the accessories and let's see what you come up with kind of thing, <laughs> because you never know. You can grab two different accessories, put them together, and now you have a brand new accessory suddenly, right? So yes. There's, and then once you see all these accessories, you're going to be able to really be able to get a feel. You've already used them. You're already familiar with them. But now when you get into the uh, camper thinking mode, for sure, they're definitely going to... Uh, they're definitely going to shine in this particular setting. I definitely have some more exploration to do. But the last element that I want to do is going to be a roof rack. So it's going to serve two purposes. It's going to have a, a, a small depth of additional storage on the roof, but it's also going to frame my solar panels. So I've got a, there's one bracket that will hold two pieces of pipe in parallel like this. Yeah. So I'm thinking either two or three um, tubes high, um, not a lot of storage, but the top tube would be the bracket for the solar panel. But I want that to be able to tilt up, one, to open up for the storage, but two, to get the right angle for solar exposure. We have the two types or the parallel connectors, if you will, the HJ13, which is just going to hold two pipes parallel to each other. And then there's the HJ23, which is going to hold two pipes parallel to each other, but one is going to be able to pivot. So maybe for the uh -huh. bottom section, you'll just have the HJ13s in order to create a nice solid frame. And then that top level or the last portion of it will be with the HJ23 in order to fix it securely to the, to the frame. But then you're going to be able to swing it up and pivot. And then depending on which angle you want, you'll probably set yourself up with, with another kind of a swivel mechanism in order to, to cross brace and, and then set it down on the opposite end. Which again, brings me back to that AC strap and the tink tube with the uh, three quarter inch EMT adapter, because then you would be able to essentially really adjust the height you see in the background there. I just had a, uh, an iguana run an by. Iguana. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's been chasing me all day long. We've been looking at each other all day long. But yeah, so basically imagine that now, because you want to have an angle, but maybe the angle on that solar panel is different sometimes. I don't know, maybe depending on where you are. Either way, you're going to be able to pivot and adjust those heights depending on which angle you're looking for. You know, most of the charging I expect will happen in transit. Um, and then, you know, right. but I, I, I don't want to turn down any sunlight when I'm sitting at a campsite either. So <laughs> no, definitely not. That's free energy. You got to take right. advantage of that. <laughs> so those are the four main tank tube components that are really going to um, be the, you know, the, the central elements of making this camper work. And so I'm excited to just explore the versatility of the product even more than I've already done. I have uh, no, no doubt in my mind that it's going to be a, a really cool project. Have the right idea. You have uh, a, a good amount of, of features that are definitely uh, going to um, just make this super, super cool camper. And then from there, I'm sure more ideas are going to be born for the next project that you may have in the future. If you're interested in building something or learning more, check out the TinkTube website. I'll put a link in the description below. At their website, you can also sign up for a 15-minute call with Esteban. The iguana will not be a guarantee. So, <laughs> <laughs> Esteban, thanks for the, uh, the time today. I'm excited about the project, and I look forward to collaborating. Thank you very much, Tom. Like I said, uh, you know where to find me. Uh, and for everybody else, don't be shy. Uh, that's what we're here for. Again, I may not have all the answers, but I will try to do my best to point you in the right direction. Thanks so much. We'll talk to Take you soon. Take care. <laughs> All right, so now that I got the trailer in the driveway, I'm going to do some key measurements. This is a perfect opportunity to introduce the co-host of this series. Hello, Father. My son, Trevor. You've seen him on the channel before, but not when he was taller than me. <laughs> Cheeky. <All right. laughs> That's a new thing. So we're going to use Trevor for measurements on this trailer. So. Trev, hop in and sit on the edge here, but with your feet inside. Oh, okay. This is 
seated type there. Now we're gonna see about length. One of the things I'm gonna need to do on this trailer because it's so short is lengthen it. So Trevor's already noticed that he can't lay down in this thing as it is. So we're gonna put the gate down, lay him down, and then see how long this needs to be. So give yourself a little air, like, yeah, there you go. All right, let me check those feet. All right, so I'm gonna be increasing the length of the trailer by about 22 inches. Is that loud, right in your ear? <laughs> those are my key measurements. One of the things we're gonna do first in the next video is deconstruct this trailer. All the wood's coming out, taking the ramp off. That's kind of the general thought for this. The sun is in my son's eyes. Ah! Yeah, no, sorry, dad joke. All right, so one of the goals of this build, obviously, is to make a trailer that Trevor and I can use together when we go mountain biking. The other goal of this project is for Trevor to make these videos with me. I'd love for him to learn how to use some of the tools that I'm comfortable using. That's something that my father did with me when I was growing up, and I really value the fact that I know how to use tools. So Trev, what are your thoughts on this build? Are you excited or are you nervous? What, tell me about uh, it. I, I'd say like a mix of both. It's pretty nerve-wracking to be making something that's kind of complicated, I guess, because campers are not simple. It is going to be a complicated build, more complicated, but I do want to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm excited about this build, and I hope you are too. Um, this video was a lot more design and ideas, so not a whole lot of action. That's going to change. Next week, we're going to get into some deconstruction, maybe even a little welding. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I appreciate the support and the vote of confidence. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Wait, is that right? That's right. <gasps> thanks. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I thought it was wrong for a second. You got it right, you've heard it enough. I've heard it so many Thanks times. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>